rebuilding a Stuart 1010V steam engine. This one is part 13. Fitting a new pair of machine slide valves, enlarging the holes in the steam chest and making the studs the correct length. I haven't worked on this engine for a few weeks and when I tried to remove the steam chest covers to continue with the job, it was very difficult. They really were tight. And from my experience working on miniature steam engines, this is not a good thing. So what I'm going to do later on in the video is drill the holes a little bit larger in the steam chests. What I'd like to look at first is a very important part of a steam engine, and that is the slide valve. This engine is a twin, so it uses two slide valves, and these are new ones from Stuart Models. These slide valves are very well machined and are dimensionally accurate. So much so that the driving block and the valve spindle are both too tight a fit in the slots in the valve. If the valve is left this way, being tight on the valve spindle and the driving block, then it's not going to work, because it's only the pressure of steam that holds the valve against the ports. You can see just how tight the fit is in this image. There's not even enough clearance to let the slide valve fall off the valve spindle if I hold it and even if I shake it. If I continue using this valve as it is, the engine will not work properly. What I'm about to do is use a needle file to slightly enlarge the slots in the valves to give a bit more clearance. Then I'm going to reduce the thickness of the drive block by rubbing it on some emery cloth, followed by rubbing the block on a piece of wet or dry sandpaper. I'll start with the filing. I'm using a flat needle file and I'm filing the place where the valve spindle fits. I don't have to remove very much metal at all, but I do need to keep the angle of the filing square. I do not want to taper these parts. As you can hear, when the needle file slips off the valve, it makes quite a noise, because I'm putting a lot of pressure on it. Whatever I've done so far, though, is not enough, because the valve is very reluctant to drop off the valve spindle. Even when I tap it gently with a hammer, the valve is still stuck to the valve spindle and the block. Time to reduce the thickness of the block and see if this makes a difference. I'm starting the job using a piece of 180 grit emery cloth. I should be doing this on a surface plate really, but it's fine on the bench. The bench is pretty flat, and very soon I can see evidence of the block getting smaller. I finished the job using a piece of 400 grade wet or dry sandpaper. In this clip I'm filing the other valve. And although I haven't shown it on the video, frequently I'm trying the valve spindle and the drive block for size. This is a fairly simple job, if not a little bit tedious, and in no time at all, the slots in the slide valves are both a bit larger. I gave the second of the drive blocks the same treatment as I did with the first one. 180 grit emery cloth first, followed by wet or dry sandpaper, which is 400 grade. It's time now to look at the studs. These are a new pair of Stuart studs because I bought a pack full. I bought a few because these 7BA studs are quite useful to have in the workshop. I did notice that these modern studs are not like the old ones. The earlier version of these studs for number 10 models were threaded shorter at one end than the other, but these are threaded the same amount at both and they're a bit longer. Ideally, I would like to screw the studs into the cylinder block until none of the thread is showing. But for this job, the holes aren't deep enough. So what I'm going to have to do is shorten every one of these studs. Here I've loosely screwed four studs in place, and you will see that the steam chest does not want to go onto the studs, and I really don't want to force it. All of the holes in the steam chest covers are a little bit bigger, so they slide on OK. I need to be able to slide the steam chest on in exactly the same way, easily. I don't always do what I'm doing here, I'm using a Proxon motor tool in a small drill stand to enlarge the holes, and I'm not enlarging them very much at all. The problem is, the drill that is in this stand isn't very powerful, so I have to start it off running very fast and suddenly put as much pressure on as I can so that the drill doesn't overspeed and become blunt very quickly. It's working out okay, these Proxon motor tools really are very good, but this is Proxon motor tool abuse. I should really have used my proper drilling machine, but there are two schools of thought on this. The health and safety aspect is the most important. Because of the low power of this small motor tool, it won't snap the drill off 
nor will it suddenly grab the work and spin it round. After a while I managed to drill through all four of the holes without burning out the Proxon motor tool. And now you can see that both the steam chest and the steam chest cover fit in place very well. I'm going to fit the studs into the cylinder using Loctite 603 and for that reason I've put some on the bench to dip them in and as you can see I've shortened the ends of each of the studs. The length of the studs now is about right. It is of course worth remembering the gaskets have to go in there in between the steam chest cover and the steam chest and the cylinder. The pair of gaskets though are very thin so I don't think it's going to be a problem. In fact in this clip both of the gaskets are in place and as you can see the length of the studs and the nuts are quite a good match. With this very pleasant image on screen it's time for me to go because I've got a few Christmassy things that I have to do. I'd like to wish all of my viewers a happy holiday. Eat, drink and be merry and stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.